So we have a similar example. We've got a negative exponent here, p to the negative 8, and q to the negative 10. We've got 7 to the negative 2 power and this q to the negative 12. So I'm going to take this p to the negative 8 and I'm going to move it to the bottom of the fraction, right? And I'm going to take this q to the negative 10 and I'm going to move it to the bottom as well. Now I'm also going to take this 7 to the negative 2 and move it on top and the q to the negative 12 and move it to the top. The only one I'm not moving is the p to the second because it's already a positive exponent. And so I get 7 to the second on top and q to the 12th on top over p to the 8th on bottom, okay, p to the 2nd on bottom, and q to the 10th on bottom, right? Now what you should recognize is that these both, both these terms have like what? Bases, they have like bases, right? It's p times p, but this one's p to the 8th and this one's p to the 2nd. So when you multiply like bases, what do you do with their exponents? Add them. So I'm going to write this as, first off, 7 squared is 49. Q to the 12 over P to the 8th times P to the 2nd is P to the 10th. And then I've got Q to the 10th. And now I look on top and bottom, and is there anything on top that's also on bottom as far as bases? There is. I've got a... Q on top, and I got a Q on bottom. When you have like bases and you're dividing, what do you do with their exponents? Subtract. subtract. Now, here's what you do. When you subtract, the question is, once you subtract, does your result go on top or does it go on bottom? Well, here's how you know. Your exponent for Q on top is 12, right? And your exponent for Q on bottom is 10, right? Which is bigger, 12 or 10? 12. Whichever one's bigger, that's where you put your result. So since the 12 is bigger and it's on top, your result will go on what? Top. top. And so I've got 49, and Q to the 12th divided by Q to the 10th is Q to the 2nd, and it'll go on top over P to the 10th. And so there's your answer right there.